Barn owl nest boxes in buildings last a lot longer and the extra shelter can be great for the owls. Thinking about where to put a barn owl nest box in a building, the first thing is the landscape. Barn owls are farmland birds. We need a rural open landscape. We don't want to stick a barn owl box in an urban area or in dense woodland. Barn owls are not woodland birds. That's a beautiful isolated old barn. You might think that is better than a barn in a busy farmyard. Actually it's not. Barn owls are just as likely to be in a farmyard in a busy situation as they are in an isolated building. But with the right access hole that could be perfect. Looking across here we've got a range of different heights of farm buildings. So we've got lower buildings, we've got taller buildings and looking further around we've got some modern agricultural buildings as well. Now where should you put your barn owl box? The obvious place to me is that building because it's the tallest. If all things are equal you generally find barn owls will prefer to be in the tallest building. There needs to be an access hole. Here you've got two possibilities where the barn owl could fly in or could perch in that hole at the very very top. You could use a building that hasn't got a suitable access hole. If you're making an access hole into a building then the minimum size you want is 100 millimeters wide by 200 high, optimum size about 130 millimeters wide by 250 high. But hopefully your building has already got a suitable access hole. Or perhaps the side is completely open. These fairly Ugly looking modern agricultural buildings are ideal in fact because the barn owl can fly straight in and out. You might think well that's no good because it's a busy place the buildings are in use but one of the great things about barn owl nest boxes is they provide places for the owls to hide and an owl that can hide feels really safe it will get used to all the normal activity going on in the farmyard. Don't erect a barn owl nest box within one kilometre of a major road like this. Barn owls are killed here frequently. If the road is screened for many kilometres on both sides by high hedges or closely spaced trees, a barn owl will fly high when it crosses the road, that might be okay. But in most circumstances, just don't erect a barn owl box within one kilometre of a major road. This is a fantastic old barn. It looks perfect for barn owls, but about half of all of these old farm buildings don't have anywhere suitable for the barn owls to nest. And so a nest box is a really good idea very often, even in these old buildings. Once you've got your building, then you need to choose the best position for the nest box and, uh, and then get the box up. Here we've got uh, Rick and Matt to lend a hand. Here we are inside and Straight away when we came in, genuine barn owl pellets on the floor and an old barn owl feather just knocking around, wonderful. So a nest box we put here is very likely to be used. Now just remember barn owls are not interested in nest boxes. What will attract their attention is the hole into the nest box. So when we're thinking about a position, we want to position the box so a bird coming in by chance, here's the big opening, look, the bird's going to come in this way, we want it to see the hole into our nest box and when I look around in here the obvious place to put the box is on one of those horizontal tie beams right up at the top. When you're choosing the nest box position another thing to think about is is it going to be a nuisance for other people using the building so you know, agricultural buildings that are still in use you don't want somebody to hit their head on it or a machine moving bales to accidentally knock it down so think about other building users Put it somewhere where it's going to be dry. The reason nest boxes in buildings last so long is because they're dry. But if there's a leaky roof, obviously avoid that bit of the roof. There are five methods for attaching nest boxes inside buildings. Uh, we're going to show you all five in this short film. The first one is called the hookover, which is what we're going to do now. We're doing this as part of our work. So we're using a commercial ladder rated to 150 kilos and a fall arrest system so we can maintain three points of contact with the ladder at all times. If you're doing this in your own time and it's not work, it's perfectly okay to use a domestic rated ladder. They're rated for up to 125 kilos. So provided you weigh less than 100 kilos, that should be fine. But if you're erecting a big heavy nest box as part of your work, 
or you're doing it as a volunteer for an organisation, you've got to comply with the Working at Height regulations. First, measure the width to make sure the box is going to fit. It's 56 centimetres wide. And also, measure the thickness of the timber that you're going to fix it to. Measure out from the front of the box and mark two hole positions on each side that are within that distance. Then drill four holes to suit the nails or screws that you're going to use. It's a really handy tip to put the screws in the holes before you take the box up the ladder. For this hookover method, you must have the ladder on the side of the beam that the box is going to face. Once you are happy that the box is tight up against the timber, simply screw the box into place. So here we are in a fairly typical modern agricultural building. We can imagine our barn owl flying in through the big opening. Remember, barn owls are not interested in boxes, they're interested in holes. So we want the hole to be visible. We're going to put the box high up on the back wall with its entrance hole facing where the owl is going to come in. There are two methods for attaching the box to the wall which we're going to show you in this building. The first is called the sliding battens and the second is called the U-shaped frame. Using a spare piece of batten which is the same width as the box, hold the batten in position where you want the box to go, making sure that the gaps down behind the corrugations are clear and then mark the corrugation widths centre to centre. In the case of corrugated iron, the gaps won't be big enough, but you can open these up by driving in little wooden wedges. Now simply mark the back of the box with those centre to centre positions and then make little lines where the battens are going to go. Having checked the space that you've got above the beam, cut two battens that are going to hang down well below the box. And then once they're cut, put both pieces in position and mark where the screws will go so that they go into the internal battens. Pre-drill these holes to prevent the wood from splitting. And then position them exactly parallel on the back of the box according to your marks and attach them. Erecting a nest box as part of your work, or as a volunteer for an organisation, you must comply with health and safety law and lift the box using a pulley or some other mechanical aid. We use a simple pulley like this one, which is rated to 500 kilos. And then slide the box down into position, and that's it. Now we're going to do the U-shaped frame. It's a brilliant method if the material behind the rails, behind the beams, isn't corrugated. You simply make a three-sided frame of wood for the box to sit on. First, turn the nest box over. We're using 50 by 25 millimetre batten. Measure the size of your box from front to back. Add 50 millimetres for the width of your batten and a little gap for a bit of wiggle room. And then cut two battens to that length. Now cut another batten that matches the width of your box and pre-drill to make a three-sided frame. Once you've got the first two screws in, use the squareness of the box to line up your battens. Simply screw those three battens together, that gives you your U-shaped frame and then pre-drill the frame so that it's easy to fix once you're up the ladder. 
You know how wide the rail is, the, the wooden beam that you're fixing the box to, so using that distance, make a little mark where the beam edge is going to be, and it's a good idea to put the screws in a little way before you go up the ladder, it just makes the task easier. Now simply screw the frame into position. Once the box is sitting on the frame, go ahead and fix it in position, but do make sure the screws are going into the internal battens and that no sharp ends are going into the box. Don't forget to ensure the lid is on and there you have it. If you've got a vertical flat surface and there's absolutely nothing to fix the box to, the simple solution is a method we call stilts. And this is a stilt. A simple L-shaped frame, you can fix two of these to the wall and that gives you somewhere to secure your nest box. Here we've joined two stilts together before attaching them to the wall. Screw the top of one side in first, check that it's level and when you're happy, screw in the other side. Once the box is in position, fix the box once again, making sure the screws only go into the internal battens. Pop some screws in at the top through into the top of each stilt and don't forget the lid. At this site, we're going to bottom mount the box to get it up as high as possible. When the machine is bringing in these big round bales, the driver can't see anything above the bale. We don't want our box to be knocked down, so we're going to get it right up in the roof truss. So here we are, right up high, facing the opening where the owl's going to fly in. First, make sure the box is going to fit. It's 51 centimetres wide and 62 centimetres high. Always make sure the box is well secured. Screws, nails, whatever. Here we're putting a screw in through the top of the box into the wood adjacent to it and we're now screwing down through the corners of the box into the timber below. Once the box is up, don't forget to put the lid on. Uh, you might want to put your name and phone number on there. We tend to put Barn Owl Trust on our own boxes. So, uh, yeah, job well done. So there we are. That's five methods of erecting a Barn Owl nest box inside an outbuilding. Whichever method you use, make sure you keep yourself safe and don't work on your own. You can find more information on the Barn Owl Trust website and if you'd like to make a donation to support this work, that would be wonderful. <music>